Second week back. How do you guys feel? It's all right. It's good. Pretty good. Blown up since then. My album came out, yeah. Yeah. How did that go? I linked it in the in the video. I don't know if you noticed. Oh, that. thank you. Yeah. Did you listen to it? Fake. Fake. You hesitated <laughs> too much. You hesitated way too much. My bad, dude. I haven't listened to it yet. Hurt. Listen. I'm hurt. Listen. Played, uh, I got I got to your Spotify account and saw tracks. I think you have five tracks, right? Mm-hmm. In the album. So you see, I know that you have five tracks. Oh, okay, cool. But you don't know what they sound like. No, not yet. <laughs> okay. I just wanted to be in the right mental space. Oh, okay. That's yeah. a good excuse. It is, right? No. Right? <laughs> I would address somebody off camera, but anyways. Continue. They don't have a mic. Uh, Man, usually we cover uh, current events and just recap what we talked about in youth. Uh, big thing that happened was the inog. The, the eggnog. eggnog. The eggnog. Joe Biden's the eggnog? He looks like he drinks a little too much eggnog. Whoa. That's very insulting. I trust. I, I just want anybody who watches this, which I think the last people who watched this, there was like seven views. So the seven of you who watched I was this, one of them. I was say, one I of watched them. it six times. <laughs> <laughs> we are a youth ministry. Wow. So I just want to let them know that. Wow. You know, now that we've said small that. Small steps. Small steps. Small steps. Inauguration. How was that for you guys? Uh, I was at school. They didn't talk about it? Uh, my government class did, but my government class is this at seven a.m. That's very obligatory. <laughs> my government class. Did you, did, you, did you hear that? Yes. I did that one out. I heard everything: the burp and then the. <laughs> um, my government class is at seven a.m. So they were like, "It's happening today," and they didn't talk about oh, it. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was like at eleven forty or something like that. Yeah. Some. Yeah. Cool. You. Uh, the only people that watched it. Were the people that were in uh, the government class, but I don't have that until like tomorrow. I've been on B days. So. Oh, block scheduling. So it's not like a huge deal for you guys then. Not really. Not yet. What does that mean? Oh, well, he hasn't done anything yet. Oh, so that much you know. Okay. He's already signed executive orders. Bum bum bum. Well, when I ever I figure them out. Whenever what? I figure out what they are, is what I'm trying to say. I see. Please, when you chew, <laughs> back you away from the everything? mic. Yes, dude, I can hear everything. People aren't going to watch this unless the ASMR folks here, which we love you, but you're kind of weird. Full hate, full hate. Full hate. Hey, Not it's the no-cap recap, man. Exactly. We can't lie. we got to be brutally weird. honest with people. Absolutely. Yeah. Speaking of which, okay, future's bright, so we're talking about, this is the last week that we're talking about it. The next week, we're going to movie theater. <laughs> hey, it's going to be fun. Watch Wonder Woman. Maybe we can talk about women's rights. No, I'm just kidding. Maybe. Not kidding. <laughs> Whatever. If you want that, we can. <laughs> no, you really I could, mean, no, you no, couldn't no. split that one down the middle, could no, you? No, I can't. <laughs> I can't. It's just, we, we would have to replace y'all. I thought this was a pretty... It's pretty diverse. Yeah. But we don't have any Both women. looked at me, I felt uncomfortable. Well, <laughs> so you are diverse. the only... Anyways, that's... N- I digress. Say it, man. Say it. I digress. Mm. What do you mean, you people? <laughs> my people the Asians <laughs> I speak for the Asians of the world. I speak for all no I don't I do not speak for all the Asians in the world uh, talking about Future's Bright right mm-hmm. um, this week we wrapped it up with the idea that Jesus is our living hope and I tried to explain the best I could with the idea that uh, since I went really into the like he's a living breathing hope so a lot of the things like when it comes to expectations or solutions and all that stuff um they could look different because he's alive. He can call audibles anytime he wants to, whoever he wants. And therefore your hope rather shouldn't be in a solution outcome, but it should be in Jesus. Right. Thoughts on that initially. I'll let you go first. Dang. That means he didn't have any thoughts. <clears throat> he's got them. I'm just saying. <laughs> there have been a few situations where I've, I've actually asked God just that he make it obvious which whether or not or in a given situation, if there's uh, any sort of confusion where I'm like, I don't know which, which one. And I'm just like, make it obvious. Cause I'm going to be honest, I'm extremely unaware with things like that. So I'm like, God, I need you to make it so clear. Even if it involves the other variables, literally just saying no, you know, that way it's like, okay, now there's no doubt. Cause I'm, I might misread the situation. Like, Oh, well, you know, so I'm pretty optimistic. So, but 
in those situations, it's pretty rare for that for those to happen. Um, because usually I want a specific outcome, and that's honestly something I struggle with is just accepting his will over mine, just because I, I like my plan. So it's hard sometimes to be like, well, God, I trust you because like my plan looks pretty good too. You want to <laughs> check it out, God? I mean, but yeah. I'll add to that topic for a second. <clears throat> then we can come back to you. Well, I, you I had go. a burp. I was going to talk, but I had a little burp. Oh, there's another one you can talk. About. All right, cool. So yeah, so you're, this sounds really weird, but when I was prepping for this entire series, I thought of you specifically. I'm like, I wonder how AJ is going to <laughs> think about <laughs> something's behind me. And it looks really creepy on camera because it's just black behind me. So, What do you mean by that? Uh, the color of darkness. Of the skin? No. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Anyways, AJ, <laughs> the idea that I, I, was, I was curious what your thoughts were going to be on the series because we've talked before about how you're very confident in what, what you want to do and <laughs> you're very organized with that. So what's the, one of the struggles? You said that you struggle with that sometimes. What's, what's kind of the, if you can break that down a little bit, a little more. <laughs> um, Is it just because it looks good enough for you and you just can't imagine that there's another solution? Well, for me, I mean, the whole, the whole idea of it's, if it's not broke, then don't fix it, you know? Mm. So for me, like my life right now, I'd say it's pretty good. Nothing like crazy bad's happening. For, I mean, obviously there's crazy stuff happening around me, but in my own life, nothing, nothing out of the ordinary. So I'm like, I'm happy with it. Mm. And I don't really want it to change. I don't really want anything crazy. And a lot of times you see that in the Bible, anytime, no offense, no offense, God, but anytime, he, you know, like he truly <laughs> gets like, involved, <laughs> like, bro, crazy stuff happens. Like, I mean, stuff that's supernatural. And I, was, I don't, it's something that I'm not necessarily super comfortable with, but I know I should be. So it's something I have to work with. That's a good answer. Do you have a response? Oh, well, I don't think, I don't think change is supposed to be comfortable. Isn't that the point of change? I'm leaving. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. I'm just no, I was just saying, like, it, like, you can't have the expectation that you're going to be comfortable with change. That's not the, the entire point of change is that you're getting out of your comfort zone, right? Mm-hmm. So you just have to be willing to change. I think, but. Right? Yeah. So I said that really harshly, but I meant it with love. Just okay. crying on the inside. Say the truth in love. It's all right. So I agree with you in the sense, Samuel, that. You sh- we should be embracing change, but I also understand how hard and difficult that is, especially like when you have the way that you think you're going to go. Like my entire life, we're kind of going off course here, but my entire life, I had this idea of what a youth pastor was supposed to be, right? Which looks completely different than what I'm doing right now. Uh, and even I've been a youth pastor here for what, six years? A while, yeah. When did you guys get in youth? I got in in eighth grade. AJ was here before me. Right. So like seventh, I think. Basically, the entire time you guys have been here. So, like, even when, even when I was a youth pastor before that, like, it looks completely different. So, I think as you get older, it's not that, like, you like it more. <laughs> I think it's just you, you're just like, no, it's just the way that God works. Is You have a, this is going to sound so bad, so I apologize to anybody who's watching, but um, I don't know who quotes it, but. I know where I've seen it quoted and it was on a particular show about a couple of sisters that are on reality TV. That's all I'm going to say. But she says that when we make plans, God laughs. And I know what she, it's, it sounds very like elementary to boil it all down to that. But the idea that we can make, I have a vision or a plan that I think is going to work out. And I think that's what God wants me to do. But then when we go to execute it, as long as, and, I, and I'm all over the place, but specifically for you, AJ, I think your heart is in the right place in the sense of like, hey, just make it obvious. Like if I need a detour, or I'm away from this, like do it. Which that might mean that uh, it, it may be really crazy because he's gonna like, you told me to make it obvious. <laughs> Lightning bolt. I'm just kidding. Whatever. But what about you, Samuel? Uh, just about like the living hope thing? Yeah. Like that concept. Oh. So for him, he's he not that you struggle, but that I don't ever struggle. Sorry. Mm-hmm. He's apex. But <laughs> for for you, you you've unveiled, hey, like mm-hmm. sometimes that 
God's plan and God's way can be a little bit struggle for me because you have a pretty good head on your shoulders. Your rebuttal to him was. Well, uh, just to be like, don't expect to be comfortable with change because yeah. that's not the point. So is, are you saying that then at that point you are comfortable with change? Like no. very comfortable? No. <laughs> No. Heck, man. I just I, why I, you gotta roast AJ for doing all that then? No, I was saying people like, were listening. <laughs> just, children uh, heard what you said. Do it for the children. <laughs> Me, <laughs> I'm the children. Te- technically, you're not though. Yeah, not anymore. Mm. I'm legal now. Well, that's weird. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Add me back on Tinder. Anyways, sorry, didn't mean to cut you off. Go. Not since I'm 18, but since the 13th Amendment, I'm legal now. Okay. 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 Uh, we really do respect and honor and cherish <laughs> everyone, okay? I just want to say that. I don't want people to watch this and be like, y'all are insensitive. As a person of color yourself, I feel like they get the message from you. Am I a person of color? Yeah. Is, is that weird that I don't associate myself with that? I don't know. I don't know what, it, I don't know what it's like to be Asian. I think I'm about to... Like, I don't know what it's like I, to be. I'm about to probably say something that's very ignorant. Well, but, you know what I think about the living hope is. Uh, there you go. I think it's a good, good call. Good call. Um, I don't. I always kind of have it in the back of my mind that like God's there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, I guess the hope goes along with that. Not to be like I know everything and I trust that God's gonna. I mean, I do. That's kind of in the back of my head, but in the front of my head is a lot of different other stuff. So it's like. I know where my I know where the Z is. Like if A to Z, I know where the Z is at. I know I'm at like maybe like E, like letter E. But I don't know the the F through Z. That's a that's a lot to handle. I don't think I I don't think anybody's ready for that. I don't think I'm ready for that to know all that. So and even if I did know, I'd probably mess it up. So just getting that through my head whenever I'm like, God, this is the one. This is the move right here. This is where I'm putting all of my effort on right now. And then it's just, no. So it's not like why try, but it's just like, why try, I guess. Yeah, I think, uh, so, you know, we're we're sort of talking about God's plan right now. Um, I think the living hope really comes into play when you've, when you're in a situation that looks hopeless. Right. Where, and what I talked about tonight was like, you know, if you're believing God for something or a healing or, you know, it, or your future, right? Like, and that stuff doesn't look like the way that you expected it to be. The idea that trying to make sure you don't tie your hope to an expectation, which sounds so weird, but like <laughs> to not tie your hope to an outcome or a circumstance or an item, but you tie it to, him, I think in that sense, it, it's a little, I feel like it's a little different than what we're talking about right now, right? Like the idea that re- irregardless of what's happening, and maybe this is what you're headed towards, Samuel, what, it doesn't matter what's happening. I feel comfortable with being like, I don't have to know that. Like, but I, f- I also feel like coming from what I would call the word of faith movement. Uh, it's very counterculture to that movement because the whole point is you name it, claim it, right? Like you, de- you. It's very sorry for anybody who's going to rave up, but like that was kind of what the the ditch of that was, right? Like you can almost turn God into a vending machine because you can, based on like in the name of Jesus, sort of manifest things to happen, and it's not, and and that's where it's kind of hard because you go. Okay, I know God's will is to heal people and that he does love people, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to look like what I'm asking him to do, right? I'm rambling right now, but I think I know what you're I think I, I get what you're does saying. Does that make sense, I guess, for you well, guys? Yeah, how well, does that relate to your world, I guess? Well, in like the nineteen sixties there was this book that was written called The Authority of the Believer. I don't know if you wrote it. If you read it. I didn't write it. I mean, if you wrote Kenneth it. Kenneth I mean, Hagen wrote, wrote it. If you read it, is what I'm trying to say. It's actually a pretty good book. It is, it's all about Ephesians and, yeah. I, I would recommend reading it with an open mind, as well, yeah. I would say. Well, it's like, as a Christian, you have God inside of you, so you have the authority of God. But you, 
you are still 100% man and everything that you aspire towards is 100% God, I believe. So for me to be like, well, if God is, if I declare something in my life, that's only, um, I'm not, you know, viable, is that the right word? That's only allowed? I don't know. But that's only acceptable if God says it is, because we only get our power through God. So when you were talking about like God's a vending machine, when I'm declaring like, if I'm declaring like, I need a new car. Yeah. I don't need a new car. But if I, if I was like, I need a new car, and God's like, you don't need a new car, you need a new house. So for me to declare, I need a new car, and I need a new car, sometimes it's, you have to declare with your eyes open. You know what I'm saying? So like, I can speak the words of my mouth, but I also have to keep my eyes open so I'm not blindly drilling into this door that's closed. Mm. I like that perspective. And I'm sure that's completely foreign to you, AJ. <laughs> Maybe. Stupid. <laughs> not that he's, because you and I came from a different background, like when it comes to church. So you came from Church of God, Church of Christ? Church yeah, Church of Christ. Christ. Church of Christ, which I don't, I don't believe there's any sort of doctrinal beliefs that way. Um, all I know about the Church of Christ is y'all didn't have bands, but we used our voices to the, create the true instruments of God. It was a symphony with worship. It's actually very beautiful. <laughs> but yeah. And I wonder if that's why I wonder if 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 maybe that's why there's a difference in I don't want to say struggle, but the difference in approaches with with that. Like your background maybe with more charismatic movement, his in the Church of Christ movement. And I don't want to say they're rigid. Like, I, everybody, if you believe in Jesus, man, we're going to see you up in heaven. It'd be dope. But do you ever wonder if that, if your upbringing kind of shaped that viewpoint of like, hey, God, just make it super obvious? Yeah. Versus feeling like you pray out and declare the will of God. Like see, saying, that was a foreign concept to me. That was something that especially like, First going like youth camp and stuff that made me very Merch. uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah. I was like, "Oh man!" Well, you got it. hold on. You have to tell the story about <laughs> you going down wanting to get prayed for. So, <laughs> so this guy was uh, he was like baptizing people in the Holy Spirit and stuff, praying over them, and they would just drop to the ground and stuff. And I was like, "That looks awesome. I want to try that. I wonder what that feels like." And so I went down and I started walking, and then I saw like or not in here. I didn't see anything, but uh. Someone was like crying or like screaming, and I was like, "Oh, I, I don't want this anymore." So I stopped and I just turned back. I'm like, "I'm gonna go back to the group." Oh man, yeah. it's so funny because as a leader, you see like when when you guys, which I know that sounds kooky, but it <laughs> we, it's hard to explain. It's hard to explain. Moves with the Holy Spirit. Uh, there's definitely a ditch one way or the other, right? But uh, in that environment. I don't believe the person who was initiating the prayer was wrong. I believe there are people who are kooky weird with it that are receiving it. Yeah. So, <laughs> but it always is interesting because when you see like as a leader, your students go down, you're like, oh man, like God must be really moving. And then only and then to turn around <laughs> and hear that story and be like, oh, that sucks. Like, <laughs> I'm sorry that that happened to you. But anyways, all that being said, it's, it's kind of foreign to you. Mm -hmm. So. I wonder if that's, again, trying to make that connection, if that is why you view your approach to God and his plan and your hope for the future yeah, in, the, would, in the way that you do. I would say, I'm not, I'm not going to say that this is, what they, this is the only thing they teach, but at least what I gathered from my time going there was, or from the specific Church of Christ, was that God rewards hard work. And like when you just oh. stay as a good Christian, like you just do the, the, what's right, then that's that's like your focus. Do what's right in God's eyes, and then get to heaven. That's that was like the core. And then now it's like now you know you don't have to. You don't you don't like obviously the Holy Spirit isn't the deciding factor whether or not you're going to heaven. However, there is this route too, and I'm like I don't know how I feel about any of this anymore. So I'm just kind of sitting here at the beginning, especially when I first got here. I was like I don't kind of prefer just the easy like you know. What I know, at least. Yeah. Um, but everyone, I don't know. It's just, it's a, and it's an interesting ideology for me. 
It's it, it's interesting you say it that way because if you know AJ, he is a super achiever. <laughs> is that fair to say? Yeah. Like I, you like accomplishing things. Very much so. So it is interesting that your background was in that. So I didn't realize that that's what the main, not, I'm not saying we're not doc, like theologians <laughs> by any means, but. That's just what I gathered from it. I have everything that they like taught. Which isn't bad. Like we were, it's very like scripture heavy, like especially in the like Sunday school. It's mm-hmm. a very different uh, environment, especially like what we have here. But we would go through the books yeah. and we would, like at the time I could name off every book of the of the Bible and like an order, Old Testament, New Testament. Like I knew a bunch of facts about it. So I mean, my spiritual knowledge was up there or my biblical knowledge, my spiritual knowledge was kind of lacking. Yeah, and, and the benefit of that is that you understand very much like God's sovereignty and everything. Like that makes, excuse me, that totally makes sense. And then the the downfall of like individuals like myself or even Samuel is that we can almost get too full of ourselves. And like you were saying, we can get, we can we almost be blind to what God's wanting us to do. Like we're playing in our own sandbox and God's <laughs> like, hey, you need to go in this direction. We're like, no, I like playing in my little sandbox. <laughs> That's ridiculous. You know what? I actually... You know, last week, you guys said that the ratio was wrong. Remember? And we got another one. The authority of, of the, the belief. video. Oh it's the authority of the belief. She watched the video and was like, I can... I, can I declared that. it on this podcast. And I, I manifested, like, guys. I manifest. <sighs> Why is that a trend? Okay, so that's a very interesting thing, because my brother-in-law told me he's been hearing that particular word a lot lately in the news, the idea of manifesting things, which is, it's not weird to me, because in the church world, we sort of understand this supernatural and the spiritual terms connected to that. Wow. (laughs) So unprofessional. (laughs) But we understand the supernatural or the spiritual aspects of the word manifest. Well, that's what we were talking about earlier, right? Where we were talking about, like, like, you can declare things. That's I mean, the other word for that is just manifest. Like, that, that was a common word in the church. And when people are just like, I don't know, manifesting in like the secular realm or spiritual or whatever, it's just like I'm doing the same thing with Christianity, but just with some other supernatural thing that I'm not aware, well aware about. Don't want to get into that. Don't want to get into specifics of that. Do I want to? Andrew, should I? I I have no idea what you're talking about. Okay. You guys don't know what, like, like the TikTok, like, manifesting thing is? No. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's just where people, like, act, like, really, I don't know, bougie, and then they're like, this is going to happen. This is going to happen. This is whatever is going to happen. I saw some girl was like, I'm on the cover of Vogue. I'm going to be a a professional chef. I'm going to have, like... A net worth of like five thousand dollars. That's not a lie. Of like five hundred thousand dollars, and I was like, "No, you're not. No, you're not. I'm sorry." So the trend is they are, they are, and essentially they're acting out what. And the Christian version of that would be speaking life over whatever they want to, right? But they're not using Christianity, which makes it really interesting. I don't know how to respond to that. Awkward, maybe. I mean. I mean, I, th- I see it as more interesting because I was like, what? If they're not praying to God, then what are they praying to? You know what I mean? Well, I, I, it sounds like they're not praying at all. It sounds like it's, a t- it is, it's like that book, The Secret, like the idea that you, your words have power and your words have yeah. meaning. So like, well, well, in you can visualize it. In Christianity, your words it. have power too, right? Well, I would go on and say if the Bible talks about God spoke things into existence, that all words have power. Remember a long time ago, I went on that random quirk about like actually quirks and and sound molecules. Do you remember that? Yeah, was that yeah. the oh quantum mechanics or was that a different one? Quantum physics, I think. Quantum yeah, physics. Yeah, it was the quantum physics of like sound. Yeah, dude. One day we'll talk about that. But I believe that every like I believe that your voice definitely has power. But I, I just I guess that's so weird because I guess. Well, and the the straight cut and dry secular version of that, I think, would be like, if I say something to myself enough times, then I'll actually start to believe it. Right. But theirs is like, okay, let's say that like atheism is like a a, a one, and like like uber, like I don't know, like cultic religion is like a ten. I'd say theirs is about a four, 
it's not like super high or three or four. It's just like they they believe that like some ethereal like spiritual thing is going to happen whenever they manifest these things. But it's not like it's not like Christian based. And it's not like it's not like religion based at all. It's just like like there's a literal category so it's of people. Like chakra. Like yeah, it's like an inanimate <laughs> spiritual force. Yeah, it's literally or the force. Yeah, it's literally like it, it's there's like a segment of people that are called spiritualists, and it's like I don't know. There's some hardcore spiritualists. Like there's one that works at my work, and she was talking about how like uh, <clears throat> bet you heard all of that. <laughs> uh, there was a, she was talking about how like ancient Egyptians. There was aliens that came down, and that was like. Their god Ra and like Amun Ra, or like the the owls and stuff like that, they're like nineteen foot people or whatever. And like I was like, okay, whatever. I mean, you know, I'm gonna just tell the story. She was like, yeah, there's like there's eighteen foot aliens that came down and like helped us build the pyramids, and that's what the the Egyptians were writing in hieroglyphics, and like they could be living among us like right now. And I was like, well, I could definitely tell if there was an eighteen foot <laughs> alien that was living among us right now. Well, kind of and in. and then she was like, but. They wanted to blend in. I was like, well, they didn't want to blend in in ancient Egypt, so why would they want to blend in now? And then she couldn't answer the question. But I wasn't like, ah, Christianity. But I was just like, just pointed out the flaws and whatever she was thinking. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's that, and that, I think that's spirituality taken to like a six. There's definitely more hardcore people out there, but she was just like in that kind of realm, I guess. And there was like stuff about like cats and stuff like that. It's like, like it's like a mix of like like just Eastern religions, like Hinduism and Buddhism, mixed with like mythology, like not like gods and goddesses, but like uh Egyptian mythology, like like cats have like significant power and stuff like that. It's just a lot of different stuff. And it's like like they're talking about like energy transfers and like people can get like reincarnated and stuff like that. So it's like I know it's just it's it's gonna get taken to eleven pretty soon, like the general public. Mm. I remember uh, even like this is not a Christian show, but I was watching Family Guy, and uh, sorry, uh, it was this was like an episode that was made in like two thousand and three or four, <clears throat> and Brian came out as an atheist, and Lois was like, "No, we believe in God in this house, and like, we may not go to church, but we believe in God." You know what I'm talking about? Uh-huh. So that was just interesting to hear from like a non-christian show that like people like the a non-christian show that's supposed to represent the the average population at the time it's like most people didn't go to church but they were still considered christian like christmas and easter only those kind of people Mm -hmm. and i think agnosticism like kind of became more popular towards the 2010s and i think there's like a more shift towards like just like other stuff. I think it's very interesting that there is a movement that is sort of dabbling in the spiritual. Um, in, in my perspective, that would be dangerous. Uh, I'm not saying it's like Ouija board dangerous or mm-hmm. like... Not yet. Yeah. I mean, there's people that take it to 11, but... For sure, for sure. And, 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 and I think what you said earlier it makes sense that it's you leave yourself open and the whole point of jesus being our living hope we understand some people can probably contradict this but we we trust in the fact that jesus died for us and he loves us and so he has the best for us and so it's it's almost easier to give up control to someone like that that i know that regardless irregardless of what's happening what's going on right now he's going to take care of me and we could just episode oh. 2 yeah Thanks for joining us. <laughs> <laughs> Any last things? Any last words? Abracadabra. Uh, Wait, dang it. I missed that up. I was thinking of something else. Oh, you should have said it. No, it was... Um, oh, God. What's the line? Is it, are you watching closely? No, watch closely. What's the line from uh, The Prestige? Know. He's like, uh, he's like about to get hanged and he says something. It's like, watch closely. Are you watching closely? Something like that. Cool. And it's a reference to earlier in the movie. It's a, it's a dope moment. For all three people who are going to watch this, listen to my album. 
That's it. No free advertising. No free advertisement. No free advertisement. Yeah. Actually listen to it. All right. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. We'll see y'all for next week. Sometimes I just gotta take five. Sometimes I just gotta take five and rewind in my mind in the time.